Hi guys, so this video is going to explain how to record using um, GarageBand. Make sure that you check out the other videos under um, recording help first, um, especially the how to use GarageBand, um, because I do skip a couple steps with regards to the setup. So you're gonna wanna make sure you watch that before this one. With regards to this video, this is for the app version, so either on your iPhone or iPad, um, because it's a little different than the desktop computer version. Hi guys, so I'll say this one more time. Um, make sure that you've watched the other video to get set up with GarageBand before this one, because this one skips a couple, a couple initial steps. Now, if I was to be ready to record with GarageBand, there's a couple of set up things in the app version, so this is on my iPad, um, that are different from the computer version. First thing um, is over in this gear on the right, that is where we modify our tempo for our metronome. So I'm going to change that because I'm working on Mad Dash. I'm going to change that up to 144. And then I can tap out. Another thing you're going to need to change is, before you record, is this, you're gonna hit this plus sign over on the upper right, go into section A, eight bars, and then switch it to, sorry about the glare, automatic, just turn that on. That will make it so that when you record, it will record more than eight bars. GarageBand's automatically set up to just loop eight bar, um, eight measures of recording over and over and over again, which isn't great for you recording like a two minute song like Mad Dash or something. The final thing that you need to do, I believe it's the final thing, is change this um, sound setting. So this it says when you initially set up your file like I did in my other video, it comes up to this nice room. You're going to want to go to fun and then you're going to want to have it on clean. So it's already set up on clean. Um, that will make it so that there's no extra echo or extra weird noises. I know there are some fun settings you could check out um, at some point. But for your recording that you're going to sub going to submit, I would um, make sure to use this clean version. Lastly, one other thing, as you can see over here, is there's the sound level of me talking that it's getting. You're going to want to check that against your instrument with you playing. So, grab my instrument. I'm going to play a little bit. You can see that's peaking way too high, so I'm going to want to bring it down about a quarter of the way. And that's much better. It's staying in the green about what I'm talking at this level as well. So um, this is all set. Now, once I'm ready to record, that top right red button is the record button. You do need a few things before you set up your recording. First, make sure that you have warmed up a little bit. So I've already played a little bit today. Um, I don't need to warm up, so I've done that. Second, make sure you play through your song a few times with a metronome or a recording to make sure you've gotten one or two good run-throughs of it and you're not making too many mistakes. If there's this part you're stuck at, don't record yet. Practice a little bit more before you record. Once you've done those two things, then Go to whoever else lives with you if you're not alone at your house and um, ask them or let them know that you're about to record and ask them nicely to either not disturb you or not make too much noise um, because you're going to want to make sure that it's as quiet as possible in your recording setting. I'm closed off in another room, so I hope we won't have too many disruptions and won't get too much sound. Um, before you go about recording, I recommend pressing that record button for and record a few seconds of silence. So let's do that. Turn off that metronome. And then you can stop it. And then you want to listen to what that sounds like. So there's no extra sound at all or anything. Um, and that's, that means that you're good to record. If there was like buzzing or like a hum from a TV or a dishwasher or something, make sure that either wait to record until you can't hear that if the thing the machine's off, or uh, maybe you need to find a different time to record. Now, if you have a track like that, you can tap it and then a, a delete option will come up so you can reset your recording. One other thing you're gonna need is a pair of headphones. I like to use my Bluetooth headphones, so I'm gonna set those up. Um, 
So my headphones are connected. Um, I, when I put on headphones and record, I like to have one ear covered with the headphone on and then one ear open to the air so that I can hear myself playing as well because my Bluetooth headphones have a little bit of sound canceling ability and I just want to be able to hear what I'm sounding like as I play. I'm ready to record. I set my metronome, set my audio level, um, and then one other thing that I turned off earlier is I want to make sure that metronome is highlighted in blue. Um, when you go about, when you're about to record, you can um, leave a little bit of silence at the start. You don't have to be playing right away. Um, that'll help me actually line up the tracks a little better. I just want to make sure that this is still set to automatic. It is. So now I can record. I'm going to record a little bit of Mad Dash. stop now once say you that was a great take and you feel good about it you definitely want to listen back to it so i'm going to turn off my headphones so we can do that we'll listen back to that take oh turn off the metronome too so i'm pretty happy with that if I had recorded the whole thing and it was a great take, I can go about sharing it, which I'll explain in a second. If you made a mistake, maybe you made a mistake and know it, um, feel free to stop while you're recording and stop the recording, delete that track, go back to the beginning and, um, and restart from the beginning because we don't want to have too many mistakes in our final product. Um, if you find like you made a num number of mistakes that you didn't realize as you listen back, feel free to delete it. Um, but if it's pretty close to perfect or as happy as you are with it, you can definitely share it with me. Now, to go about sharing, say uh, this track was what I wanted to share. This was my great version of Mad Dash. Um, I'm going to click up in this top left. There's this paper with a corner tab that saves the project. I'm going to tap onto, oops, wrong button. I'm going to press and hold on the project and then definitely rename it. So I'll click rename and I can rename it. Mad Dash, because that's what I just recorded. And then, once that's all set, press and hold it again, and you can share under there. And you want to share it as a song, because that will make it an MP3, and that will give me the easiest access to it, rather than a ringtone or a project. You could set it as your phone ringtone. Um, whatever quality is great for you, I if it's automatically set to high quality, that's where I'm going to leave it and then share, and this pops up. If you need to send it to another device to be able to share, you can airdrop it or email it to yourself. But Google, uh, Google Classroom does have an app. So if I clicked that app, I could open up or log into my Google Classroom and then automatically upload it to um, where I have that recording assignment. I hope that was helpful for you. Please let me know if you have any questions and feel free to check out some of my other videos there and it'll load up Google Classroom and you can upload it right away or if you're maybe sharing it to another device to share you can airdrop it um, whatever works for you. Hi Milo.